So good morning everyone. Welcome to my lecture on toll-like receptors. So what are these toll-like receptors or simply TLRs? Toll-like receptors are pattern recognition receptors. So basically they recognize the pathogen associated molecular patterns which are actually highly conserved in bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites. So they recognize specific molecular patterns uh, present in those uh, uh, infectious agents. So far, 10 members of toll-like receptors have been discovered in human and 12 in, in mouse except you know, TLR10. So what is actually a toll? The toll is a receptor expressed by you know, insects and this has actually been found to be really important in embryogenesis and innate immune response against fungal pathogen in the insects. So when they first discovered this toll and they did actually subsequent study using you know different data researches and also the wet lab experiments and they actually found out you know uh, several um, toll-like receptors as I uh, explained earlier. So this figure here actually shows the structure of the toll-like receptor in comparison with interleukin-1 receptor. So this is a structure of toll-like receptor and this is the structure of interleukin-1 receptor. If you have a look at both these figures, you, you can easily see that the, the, these two receptors are very similar in, in the cytosolic region and also in the transmembrane region but very different in the uh, extracellular region. So basically, the toll-like receptor uh, extracellularly has this one domain, one region, uh, sorry, has the domain or region known as leucine-rich repeat. So extracellularly, it contains leucine-rich repeats, actually several leucine-rich repeats. And it also, it has a transmembrane region and also the intracellular region, you know, shown by uh, three boxes. And these three boxes are, you know, highly similar between uh, interleukin-1 receptor and, uh, and a toll-like receptor. So the, in, in the summary, you know, the structure of a toll-like receptor has a extracellular region, which is characterized by the leucine-rich repeat, several, and the transmembrane region, and intracellular domain known as TIR domain. So the toll-like receptor signaling actually occurs through the recruitment of specific adapter molecules, and these adapter molecules are MOD88, a TRIF, TIRAP, TRAM, etc. And actually, this ultimately leads to the activation of transcription factors and of kappa B and interferon regulatory factors, IRFs. So the toll-like receptors has been divided into two types, surface receptors or intracellular receptors. And intracellular receptors are present in endoplasmic reticulum, endosome, lysosome, or endolysosome. Like I said before, toll-like receptors are the, the, the present on the cell surface, for example, TLR1, TLR2, TLR6, TLR5, TLR4, and also intracellularly in the endosome, for example, TLR3, TLR7, 8, and TLR9, etc. So now in this slide here, I will discuss about how TLR signaling occurs. So when these TLR receptors are encountered by their respective ligands, then what happens is that the, 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 the respective TLRs actually recruit their corresponding adapter molecule. And this can be MOD88, TIRAP, TRAM, TRIF, um, TRIF, etc. So basically, all TLR receptors uh, signal through MOD88 dependent pathway, but except the TLR receptor TLR3. And then TLR receptor TLR, uh, toll like receptor uh, TLR4 actually can signal through both um, uh, MOD88 dependent pathway or MO uh, TRIF dependent pathway. So, so, therefore, we can simply divide this TLR signaling pathway into two different types, MOD88 dependent pathway and TRIF dependent pathway. So, TRIF dependent pathway is actually activated by TLR3 and TLR4, and MOD88 dependent pathway is activated by all TLR receptor except TLR3. So, MOD88 dependent pathway, like I said before, is activated by all TLR receptors except TLR3 and here the adapter molecule is MOID88 
And what this MOID88 does is that MOID88 actually recruits uh, interleukin-1 associated receptor kinases and IRAKs, IRAKs in short, which are like IRAK1, IRAK2, IRAK4, etc. So first, IRAK4 is activated initially, followed by the activation of IRAK1 and IRAK2, which leads uh, to the interaction of IRAK1 with TRAP6. And IRAK1 and TRAP6 complex actually, it activates stack one And the activation of TAC1 actually ultimately leads to the activation of V38, JNK, and NF-kappa B, which ultimately releases uh, several pro-inflammatory cytokines. In TRIF-dependent pathway, like I said before, this is activated by uh, TLR4 and TLR3. So it induces the type 1 interferon and type 1 interferon and inflammatory cytokines through activation of nf kappa B pathway and interferon regulatory pathway such as IRF3 and IRF7. So in summary, TLR signaling upon the engagement of TLR receptor the CLR signaling occurs. It is actually divided into two different types, MOID ATA dependent pathway and MOID ATA independent or TRIF dependent pathway. All TLRs uh, signal through MOID ATA dependent pathway uh, except TLR3 and TRIF dependent pathway is actually utilized by TLR3 and TLR4, which both of these pathway actually ultimately leads to the activation of P38, JNK, nf kappa B, and interferon regulatory factors, um, IRF3 and IRF7 transcription factors, which ultimately leads to pro-inflammatory cytokines and type 1 interferon. Thank you.